Hey friends at Zion, uh, yesterday if you watched the devotion, I told you I would be back with you today, so here I am. You may think that that means, um, since Pastor Roland has the Thursday devotion, that he would be preaching this weekend. If that's your expectation, this time you would be incorrect. Actually, uh, seminarian Ben Leeper will be bringing us the word this coming Sunday, and I just mentioned that because... Uh, you know, sometimes it's good to hear a different voice um, than Pastor Roland or myself. Uh, everybody, God creates uniquely with different gifts and different inclinations and thoughts, and um, we're blessed to be your pastors here and bring you God's Word, and we know that God works in and through us, and nevertheless, we know that sometimes um, we have our own proclivities and weak spots and blind spots that can sometimes be overcome when, when a guest preacher comes into our midst and brings a little bit different personality or angle or approach, and so I hope that you will be blessed by that. After that very lengthy introduction, let's look at the text. You remember last week, uh, as we work our way through the book of Hebrews here a little bit in this late Pentecost season, uh, we were warned, uh, or we were encouraged to enter the Sabbath rest of Jesus, and as I said, the book of Hebrews, almost the entire thing from start to finish is one big warning not to fall away, not to give up, to keep fighting and enduring. You know, all the way through chapter 11, we have that great parade of saints by faith, Moses, by faith, Abraham, and on and on it goes. The writer of Hebrews shows us how they persevered with their faith in the midst of all kinds of adversity, but also reminds us that they're receiving now their heavenly reward. So, this theme is, is throughout, and here it is even in chapter 3, the second half of it, which begins with these words, Take care, my brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart. And look what an un evil, unbelieving heart could do. It could lead us to fall away from the living God. You know, there are some denominational faith traditions that teach that once you're saved, you're always saved. Uh, that there's no such thing as someone who would believe and then fall away from the faith. Uh, I don't know how anyone uh, being faithful to Scripture and God's Word could ever teach such a thing. All over the New Testament, there's warnings uh, to watch over our faith, to guard our hearts and minds. Here's another one. Don't have an unbelievable, evil, unbelieving heart because it could lead you to fall away from the living God. That's not what we want. And so if you look inside your heart and you examine yourself and, and you find that it's evil, uh, you may think to yourself, well, I look in my heart and I, I ask myself, do I believe in Jesus? And, and the answer is yes, I, that I do. But notice how an unbelieving heart sneaks in. An unbelieving heart may be a heart that says, Lord, I'm doing all these works in your name. And that's the heart to which Jesus says on the last day, I'm sorry, I never knew you. The earlier Jesus had taught about the evil that comes from within out of the unclean heart, and, and it comes envy and strife and murder. Uh, all these sins that manifest themselves in our lives come from an idolatrous heart within, an unbelieving heart. And so if your deeds are evil, if there's something in your life you know is evil and you're refusing to put it out of your life, um, that thing, whatever it may be, uh, could very well be taking the place of God and driving out your faith, okay? Otherwise, why would there be a warning about falling away? Or why would there be an encouragement to keep looking at your heart? Now, if you're hearing this and you're wondering to yourself, well, I thought I believed. I try to follow the Lord. And here's Pastor Febercorn telling me uh, to beware that I might fall away. Well, I'm not saying this to uh, alarm you or, or to preach in such a way as to get you to doubt whether you're in the kingdom of God. That's not it at all. But if you do hear these words and, and there is something in your life you're thinking of that alarms you, um, then hearing these words today would be a good reminder to double down on your efforts to remove that thing from your life, which is, is separating you from God. Because while you may not be in a state of unbelief today, to let that sin, that evil fester and grow and, and strengthen, there could be a day when you actually would fall away from the living God. So what's the remedy to this? Well, the reading keeps going. In fact, gosh, this would be a 
great one to preach on. Unfortunately, I'm not preaching this week, but um, later on in the reading, it says, so today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Well, you're hearing my voice today if you're listening to this. Uh, I am the called pastor at Zion along with Pastor Roland, and so God is uh, supposed to be using my voice to speak to you today. And so today, you're hearing God's voice through me, through this devotion, and it's calling you to not harden your heart against God, your evil, unbelieving heart, not to push him away, but to hear these words and to examine yourself, uh, to rid yourself of those things that might have the possibility of eventually separating you from the kingdom of God. Who would want that? Who would want that? And yet our stubborn hearts often would rather ignore the reality of the sin in our life and think it won't hurt me. I can overcome this anytime I want. I'm just not ready to remove this right now. Well, um, that, that hardens our heart. Uh, it says, uh, you know, the deceitfulness of sin causes us to think that. But today, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Rather, turn and repent, uh, and Jesus will pour out his love and mercy in full, as he always does to those who confess their sins unto him. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift that is today. As we endeavor to walk in your will today, help us to constantly be aware of those things in our life which we need to suppress that faith might grow. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, we'll see you in worship this Sunday. Have a blessed week.